automobiles that helped him reach the prestigious World Championship Bassmaster Classic are sure to put more bass in the boat. Hello, I'm Danny Joe Humphrey. I'm from Kinston, North Carolina, and today we're down on the Pamlico River, and I'm going to show you how to fish some uh, different types of visible structures and some techniques that I use that makes my fishing successful. So come on along with us, and I'll take you out and show you what's going on down here. Had a bite. Got another one. Good twelve inch fish there. I think he's got a buddy down there. Where there's one, there's usually, I mean, where there's two, there's usually three. fishing here is a is a bridge this is a, a railroad trussle where the big trains ride across and of course it's got wooden pilings on it these wooden pilings for some reason seem to hold fish uh, year round and there's very few bodies of water that you can fish on probably anywhere in the United States whether it be a lake or a river or whatever that doesn't have a, a railroad crossing on it and this is a pretty obvious thing but it, it's a good thing to fish because it does hold so many fish I'm gonna show you a couple of ways here that I think that a little few little tricks that'll maybe help you fish this stuff a little bit better than what you've been doing. The first bait I'm using of course is a real popular bait. It's a crankbait. This is a, happens to be a Bagley crankbait. Of course it's chrome. The reason I'm using chrome because the shad is the main forage fish where we're fishing here. A couple of things I do to the bait. The first one is I put a bigger hook on it. You see it's a it's about a number five hook uh, eagle claw a little bit stronger hook than uh, what comes on it. And I use this in case I get short strikes when the fish are not really feeding, you know, they'll hit the bait and they hit it kind of short. And uh, if they just taste of this thing, I'm going to catch them most of the time. Another thing I do to it is I put this 
little swivel on here. This is a Duralock snap. There's several different manufacturers of this thing, but this is what this particular one is. This gives the bait a little bit better wiggle and gives you a little bit more control when you're trying to tune it. The next thing I do, and the reason I'm doing this, because on, on this particular bridge that I'm fishing, it's got a lot of rough stuff on the bridge, and this will really help you, if you particularly if you hang a big fish. I've got a little shock leader on here. This is a 17-pound test line, and I got it tied on to 8-pound test line, and what I got is a blood knot on here. What this does is allow you to fish this bait real, real close to the pilings, and I think this is the, the thing that helps me catch fish doing this. And by fishing real close to the pilings, you, you, you're putting your line in contact with the pilings more, and you're subject to have some frays in your line or, or lose a big fish, maybe you run around the piling, something like this, and this will really save you, save you a lot of baits too, as far as that goes. And the main thing I do with this crankbait is I want to throw it up as close to the bridge as possible, through the bridge, and I want to bring it down as close to the piling as possible. And a little trick that I do there is I tune this crankbait. You know how we have a tendency, let me get my pliers and I'll show you. Every, all your crankbait packages show you how to tune them from the left to the right to make them run straight. In this case, I don't want the bait to run straight. I want it to run a little bit to my left because that's the way I'm fishing. So I tune it so it'll run a little bit to the left. It comes in at about a 15 degree angle. This angle, what it does is allow the bait to run in and out of the pilings as it goes around. I'll show you a little bit later, a little bit more detail about that. But what it does is it puts the bait in con constant contact with the pilings and around the fish, and that's where the fish are holding. And I think it's a surprise element sometimes to make some bite. Let me show you how this works. If I can get back up to the bridge. But this is a real effective way and what it'll do to catch fish on these bridges where a lot of times other things won't do it and I think what it does is it kind of intimidates the fish here's the fish sitting there holding on his pile and then maybe he's not really in a feeding mood because if he's in a feeding mood he'll come out from behind the pile and, and he'll get it regardless of what you do to it but when you're catching them when they're not biting or it's just one of the slow times of the day this particular method has worked real good for me and it actually runs in and out of the, the pilings and if the fish is holding it in there on the pile and it's kind of like he's got to have it when it comes by, it's kind of like a, a impulse type thing. And what I'll do, I'll try to show you this the best I can. And I've already got this bait pre-tuned. And if you'll notice that when it comes through the water, it'll kind of slice through the water at about a 15 or 20 degree angle. And uh, well, here's the bridge that I'm going to throw through the bridge. Just like that. That's a perfect cast. Of course, I believe I'm going to have a little trash on. Let me see if I can get by the trash. And then I hold my rod, and I bring it down beside the bridge. And as you'll notice, it comes in. It's going in and out of the pilings. If you notice when it comes in, it's got a little angle to it. It's about a 20-degree about a angle. But what this will do for you, this will actually catch fish for you uh, right behind somebody. They'll be fishing on the outside of the pilings, and they, they may catch a fish or two on this bridge. And... But this will kind of catch them when they're, when, they're, when they're not really biting or not really feeding. And it works real good. Uh, I, it's, it's saved me a many, a many a bad day, I tell you that. Uh, another thing you can do, of course, is if after you fish a, le a certain level of this bridge, you can actually get down and do the old kneel and reel deal where you stick the rod down in the water. What you're doing here is you're getting your bait down. If this bait normally runs four foot deep, when I stick my rod down in the water three foot, then it's running seven foot deep, just like that. You can see it's bumping the pilings as it goes in. It's actually running in and out the pilings, and the fish can't stand it, I'll tell you. But this day and time with fishing pressure like it is, and you don't have a whole lot of time to, to study a lake, or maybe you're on a strange lake when you get on it and uh, you, you look for stuff like this, what we call obvious type structure. Of course, there's several baits you can fish on this bridge. I'm going to show you one that has been real good for me, and I picked this particular color just so you can see it a little bit better. This is a Gitsy, or a Fatsy, or whatever you want to call it. It's several different names. It, it's a tube lure. It's a little hollow lure. Uh, it holds air. Got an exposed hook on it. Got a little frizzly tail there, kind of like a squid or something. And it's a real effective bait. Uh, this particular color is not one of my favorite colors, but for the essence of video, I'm using the red. What you do with this is you fish the bridge with it, and of course it's a little bit slower. And this, in my opinion, I don't know what a fish thinks it is, but I think he thinks it's a little minnow or something of that nature. And this bait works real good because it is exposed. 
But basically, I do the same thing I was doing. I put the I put the gets it. That was a real good cast. Even everybody makes a bad cast. Put the gets it right in there next to the piling, just like I did then. Let it lay there, and it sinks real, real slow. Just let it sink. Let it sink. Watch your line. If your line was having a jump, you you hope there's a fish on the end of it. And then you just kind of bring it, pull it up, let it fall back down. Pull it up, let it fall back down. If there's a fish in there, he'll, he'll taste this thing. And with the exposed hook on it, about nine times out of ten, you'll catch him. It. It's a very, I don't know how to explain this bait. It's a sexy looking bait to me. I don't know whether a fish refers to it as sex or not. I think it refers to it as, as food. But throw it in as close to the structure as you can. Let it sink. Bring it on back. Just keep it moving right lightly. And when he hits it, you don't have to worry about him taking, turning loose of it. And you don't have to worry about setting the hook because the hook's exposed. This is a very effective bait. Uh, in fact, you can use this on concrete pilings too. Works pretty good. Another bait. Where is it? Here it is. Now they use it. And normally, when I go to a, go to a bridge, I start out with this. This is a top water bait. This is a boy howdy uh, Cordell bait, chrome and black. This is one of my favorite baits, top water baits, and it. It's real effective, particularly when the, the fish are feeding on shad, and it shines and, and sparkles and, and, and imitates a minnow. Of course, what I do with this is I'm doing the same thing, kind of repetitious here, but this is an instructional part of our tape. I throw it in close to the thing, and normally I'd fish this bait first. When I pull up to this bridge, I'd fish this bait first, particularly early in the morning or uh, any time of day I'd go up there, I'd start out with a top water bait. Then I'd probably throw the crankbait, and then I'd throw the, the, the gets it or that type of bait up there. A lot of people use worms, and a worm works fine, but my experience has been you got to have something a little bit different than a worm just because of the uh, fact that the fish get used to it. But I'd fish this up close to the pilings, as close as I can, because we've got a little water movement here. The wind's blowing a little bit, which is ideal. keeps the bait kind of moving, and I just pop it right easy. Kind of sounds like a little shad up there. And a lot of times you can catch the, the more aggressive fish with this type of bait. Well, listen, I hope that some of this information here on this bridge will help you. If you try some of these things, I'm sure you'll see that it might make a little bit of difference in your catch. And uh, when you're looking for, go into a strange body of water or something, and you're looking for something to fish and you don't really know what to do, I'd start out on a bridge because a bridge is an is a, is a unseasonable piece of structure. You can catch fish on it in all four seasons of the year. Some seasons are a little bit better than others. But I feel like that some of this information will help you. I got one. They just are taking that thing. They just are. Fighting about the same way, too. Well, that was going on. Just cold weather fishing. A little late. Look at it. Just had about a... Just did lift it. Just did. That's what I was telling you about that big back hook. That'll really help you. Particularly when you're biting a little light handed, when you're not really taking it. If they take it in their mouth, it don't really matter. But just like that fish there, we wouldn't have caught that fish probably with a regular hook. Just happened to snag him in the top of the nose. Fish might go 14 inches, but I doubt it. Probably about 13, 3 quarters, the kind we cry about. Let's put him back, see if we can catch one of his buddies. here as you can see is a, a boathouse and a pier combination this pier uh, boathouse both is uh, dilapidated I think that'd be a, a mild word for it but it's a good place for fish to hold uh, particularly in the summertime on bright days like we got today it's a real good day for fish to hold around these piers in there there's piers on every body of water you go on most of the time there's two types of piers most of them are stationary and there's some floating type of piers 
I, I've never had much luck on the floating type of piers, but I like the stationary type. What I got here is a bait. It's a buzz jewel. It's made by Billy Phillips out of Tennessee. And the thing that makes it unique for fishing piers is it has a tendency to run to the left and you can guide it in and out, in and out around the pilots. And I got a trailer hook on here too, just a little stinger hook, and I got a little keeper thing on here that keeps the hook on. But I'm gonna show you how this thing works. Then I'll show you a couple other baits that'll work on a pier. This should be a good pier here. I've caught fish on this pier before. What this bait does is has a tendency to, to run to the left most of the time and it bumps into the pilings. This usually aggravates the fish. Of course, we're getting a little closer to the, to the pier than normally would, but that's just in the fact of showing you what we're doing. Okay, what I got here is a plastic worm. It's rigged Texas style. And uh, this is a real good bait to use around piers because it, it's, you can throw it up there and you don't have to worry about getting hung or anything. And one of the little added features I got on this is a new product that just come out this year. It's a uh, Stanley's uh, rubber coated lid. And what you do is you get them color coordinated with your worm if you want to. This one's red and black to go with the worm. And one of the neat features about it is it allows you to peg the lid onto the head. It's got the, the rubber inside of the hole and you stick it on there. It's like a little cap and it fits on there and it won't slide down good for flipping and it's also good for fishing up here like what we're getting ready to do because the main thing I'm showing you here is what you want your bait to do is hit next to the piling and go down beside the piling and not end up three foot from the piling if you're in five foot of water. So what I'm going to do is be casting to the piling and letting it fall down right beside it. And I use a spinning rod and the reason I use a spinning rod is because it allows you to free spool your line and let your bait do this and I'll show you how this works. What you're doing with the, and the spinning rod has part to do with this, and that lead has a lot to do with it too, but it's, your bait is actually falling closer to the piling than it would normally be, say like on a spool reel. And this is real beneficial. In fact, it's sometimes if you can kind of throw just a little bit past, that was a perfect cast there, and let your line just go out, let your line just go out. Then it'll go right to the bottom and it stays, out, stays up closer to the piling. I'll show you one more time. And you keep your rod tip a little higher than normal when it hits the water, and then just let it go down with it. The deeper the water, uh, the tighter you need to be. The shallower the water, you know, it's not as important, but you want your bait to end up at the bottom. This is a thing that I really think will help you uh, fishing piers or pilings either one as far as that goes because we're fishing a pier here. There he is right there. There he is. He's laying right beside that piling there. Just like I just got through telling you about. Come on in here boy. Get him go. Get him go. Look at him. Yes, sir. That's 14-inch fish, sir. What we're doing here is fishing a pier. Of course, it's got a, an old pier structure out here, pilings outside it. And sometimes the fish hold on, hold on both of them. Now, I've changed baits here again on you. This is a little grub, a little four-inch curl tail grub with a, just a plain lead head with a wire hook on it. I like the wire hook because it doesn't take much hook setting. You just kind of ease it into fish, same type of hook you use and it gets it. One of the advantages of grub is that you can throw past what you're throwing to, like these pilings, which I'll show you in just a minute, bring your lure up to it, stop it, and then let it fall. The same principles involved here that, that I was using a while ago on the uh, worm, but it just it's a whole lot easier with the grub. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Just throw it past it, bring it up, and then let it fall. And once it usually hits the bottom, just work it a little bit from the piling and then bring it on in, throw it back, either another set or the same set, and just bring it up there and let it fall. Just keep your rod tip up and let it fall.
very effective way. And it's a little bit of presentation difference there that some people don't use. Of course, another advantage of a grub when you fish in a pier is you can skip it back up under it, like I did then. Of course, that's another advantage of a spinning rod, but you throw it back up underneath it. I call fishing where nobody else has fished. And piers are real good structure holding uh, things, and it, you hardly go anywhere unless you go to a primitive lake that doesn't have any houses or anything on it, doesn't have any piers on it. So when you're out looking for visible structure, this would be the type of thing that you'd be looking for, something you can see, something easy to find. Of course, all piers don't have fish on them. That's something you're going to have to go and hit and make up your own decisions. There he is right there. Uh-oh, he's trying to be a wrap around that one, too. Come on, Riley. Tell you to get him on that eight-pound test line. Must have him hooked good. Look at that rascal. I had him hooked good. So I wonder it didn't break that line. That's a pretty little fish there. It'll be about 14 inches. Put your back, buddy. Grow up. Okay, what we got here is a canal. This is a, what we refer to as a boat canal. Uh, they're man-made canals. They dug out the people that owned the property around it, dig it out. and. This is a real good place to fish. To fit this place, this type of structure here holds fish from, I'd say, from March until July. And the reason it does is because they come in before they spawn and they come in during the spawn. This is one of the main spawning places on, on, on your waters because the water warms up quicker. And what I'm doing is fishing a little tiny buzz bait, a little tiny buzz you is what it's called. And uh, I'm gonna fish it in, then after I get in, uh, I got a, a worm that I, that I use in this, in this type of situation. It's a floating worm. And what I usually do, you'll notice that we have a brush on, on my right side, and we kind of have a clean blank on the left side. And I prefer to fish the clean side, and the reason I do is because that's where the fish usually spawn. They don't, they don't spawn in the shade, they spawn in the sunshine. And the bottom on this side over here is probably a little harder, too. These can be a very, very productive place. And there's usually some of these on about all the water that you go around. Anywhere you go. A lot of them in Florida, Georgia. Well, some people don't like you fishing in them, but there's not much they can do about it. What I usually do is fish the buzz bait. If I get a strike at a place, I'll go around it. If I don't catch him, when I come back, I'll put the worm on him and usually catch him. It would be real nice to catch one right now. It really would. You can cover a lot of territory fast in a place like this, too. You can find out where the fish are. It'd be funny. You can go along the bank maybe 75 or 100 yards, and you won't hit anything. Then all of a sudden, you hit the little stretch there, maybe 25 or 30 yards long, where the fish are. And usually what I found, it's got to do with the, the bottom. If the bottom's good and hard or sandy, then that's where it'll be. Good, smooth bottom. Well, it don't look like they want the buzz bait. Let me show you this worm that I use, which I consider probably one of the most deadly weapons available for fishing something like this in clear water. This is the bubble gum worm. It's actually bubble gum because of the color. It's a, just a straight tail worm, and it's a high floating worm. If you'll notice, I don't have any lead on this thing at all, and I'm fishing it with a wire hook which allows it to sink real, real slow. And I got a rig Texas style here, and this allows you to throw it about anywhere. In fact, you can literally throw it on the bank and bring it off of the bank into the water, 
and the, the fish will, uh, it, it kind of sneaks up on the fish is what it does. A lot of times if you locate fish on the bed, you can throw it in there near them and just let it sink and let them sit there and look at it a minute and twitch it a little bit and they'll get it. But I'll show you how it works. You throw it in trash, you fish it in, well, like anybody, any kind of cover. If you're, about, if you're about fish, it's like a top water bait. If you notice, it'll kind of come back to the surface. It sinks real slow. Probably got one of the quietest presentations that you can put on a, a, uh, a bait. Was I fishing on spinning tackle? And the reason I'm fishing on spinning tackle is because it's a whole lot easier to throw. I usually fish it with 10 or 12 pound test line. It's a deadly bait, I can tell you that. Another way of fishing is uh, you can't fish it around a real thick cover, but it's, de it's, it's the deadliest way to fish it. The reason it is because when you have a bite, you very seldom miss it. You simply take the, the bait, the, the worm, and hook it right in the middle. I know you think I'm crazy, but I'm really not. It's like that. They call it wacky style. And you throw it, and you fish it, and it kind of comes through the water like, a, like this with a, that type of action. And it is deadly. You just got to be careful not to let it sink too far to get down in some roots or some bushes or something like that. It's just kind of pop it along. And what you do is you keep eye contact with this bait. And you can tell when a fish hits it because you can't see it no more. If you can't see it no more, you can rest assured one thing. A bass has got it and swallowed it. But it is very effective. And these canals offer fishing not just in the spring, but uh, all, all, year, all times of the year. But look for these on your, uh, whatever lake you're fishing in, or whatever river you're fishing in, or whatever water system you're looking in, you find them. And a real good way to find them, the way I found a lot of them up on some of the bigger rivers is I've rented airplanes, fly over the place. You can find them that way real easy. In fact, I found some I don't even believe anybody knows about. It really comes in handy. There he is, he's got it. Look at him swimming with it, see him? It's a nice one. Jump one time, come on. He hit that thing, I thought my line went slack. He hit it and swam out from the bank. He took that thing just as easy. Pretty little fish. We put him back. Maybe we'll catch him again another day. We appreciate it. little fish there. Not the biggest fish in the world, but he's he's pretty nice. I'm gonna put him back. This is what it's all about right here. You come down here and you fish and finally catch fish. This isn't a big fish or nothing to put on a wall, but it's just exciting to catch them, feel them bite. You never know what's on the end of the line. Put him back and we'll catch him next spring. Listen, I'm glad that you got to fish with me today and I hope that uh, Maybe some of this information that I've given you will help you. And uh, we've talked about several different patterns and several different techniques of catching fish on different structure. And uh, 
The fishing hadn't been that good, but it's been good enough to do what we needed to show you. It's, it's a little late in the fall, and uh, normally we would do this in the spring, but uh, due to time, we decided to do it, and we've worked pretty hard to catch the fish we caught today. I know it probably looks like we caught them pretty quick, but it hadn't been that easy. But listen, I appreciate you watching us, and uh, I hope that you'll be looking for some more of our tapes that'll be out under the Weekend Angler Series, and uh, they'll be just as interesting and informative as this, and I hope, I, I hope you will anyway. Until next time, I'll see you on the water. <laughs>